marquee matchup between small school powerhouses. Colonel Crawford and Lucas goes down inside the Cub Cave tonight where Corbin Thompson has slewed the Cubs. Tango with Jacob Batty and a flock of Eagles. It's live and free and you can only find it here on the OH Report streaming anywhere in the great United States, Canada, Antarctica, wherever internet can be found and it's all on the way next. National Bank treats your dreams like they're our own. It could be buying your first home together or making a lasting impact in your community, starting a new business on your old stomping grounds or reimagining your current one to keep up with the times. No matter your financial goals, at Park National Bank, what means a lot to you means a lot to us. Um, I know that I'm not Park's biggest customer, but I'm treated just like I'm Park's biggest customer. Got a mega matchup to tip off your Saturday night as we welcome you inside the first Federal Community Bank pregame show. I'm Brian Skaronski alongside the Hall of Famer Joe Baylog. And this is a really big non-league game. You got two of the top teams from the D4 Willard District going at it tonight. So I know it's only midway through the season, but it feels like there's a lot at stake. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a big test for both teams. I think it's going to be a, a a way that they can really evaluate where they're at, you know, uh, well, actually three weeks before tournament draw happens. Wow. And right now, you you know, the Crawford's one in the uh, Norwalk uh, Division three, and Lucas is two. Um, so this has a lot wow. to say about where that ranking is going to be. And, and that tournament draw, I think, is three weeks from tomorrow. Um, so it's, it means a lot. So it, it's going to be a fun matchup to watch tonight. For Colonel Crawford, they've been putting together a nice win streak, four straight, and under David Sheldon, you know this team's always going to be very well prepared. Uh, they're going to get after you defensively, and they've got plenty of great offensive weapons at their disposal, Joe. Yeah, Crawford, I mean, I think the difference is made here since they lost three out of four is they've been better defensively. Um, they just, I think they, they held Buckeye to 30 points last night. And in talking to their staff, I think they feel their defense is much better than it was three weeks ago. And then, you know, they got one of the best players in, in the area in Braxton Baker. And then Jacob Maddie's really kind of come on into his own here lately. I think he was double-double last night against yeah. Buckeye Central. Um, so, so Crawford, as you said, wow. they're going to be well prepared. And if my research is correct, if I was well prepared, I believe David Sheldon with a win tonight gets to number 300. 
Yeah. Does that sound right? Yeah, that's that sounds right. <laughs> he, he, he's been climbing up the ranks. Not quite on your level yet, Joe. He's got a ways to go for that. But you talked uh, about Jacob Maddy and what he's been able to do. Definitely elevating his game. He had a career night last night, a big double-double, well over 20 points in the game. And Braxton Baker hasn't been shooting it well. This dude's been stepping up in his absence. And I think, you know, if you look back at Crawford's three losses, I think in all three of those losses, Jacob Maddy got in foul trouble early. So that'll be a key tonight also that he can stay out of foul trouble because I'm probably really assuming in the last couple games that's what he's been able to do because Baker and Maddie are going to play 32 minutes tonight. For sure. Yeah, and pretty much if you can get it to him in the lane, he's going to make it about every time. 64% field goal, and I think he's closer to 70% when he shoots it in the lane. On the other side, for the Lucas Cubs, outside of back-to-back -back losses at the Mount Vernon Nazarene Holiday Tournament, they've got a flawless record and still unbeaten here at home. This is one of the tougher gyms, I think, to come play in if you're an opponent. It's a little bit small. It's kind of cramped here, Joe. All the fans are on one side. So for the Cubs, I think this is a big home court advantage. Yeah, I mean, this is, a, you know, when we when we were in the NCC with Lucas, this was a tough place to play. Um, and you're going to have a crowd that's going to be into it tonight. Um, and you're going to have players that are going to be into it tonight. So. The one thing, uh, you know, you're as a coach, sometimes you're concerned about playing a double weekend. You're not going to be concerned tonight yeah. about these two <laughs> teams being ready to play tonight. Yeah, Taylor Iceman, one of the best in the biz, going for win number 129 tonight, and their average margin of victory so far, 14 points per game. One of the dudes, definitely, that's helped them get to the place where they're at so far, nine wins. Their floor general, Corbin Toms, the senior point guard. This guy not only gets it done offensively, I would argue he's probably their best defender as well, and he's just calm, he's smooth. I like so much about his game. Number 12, he really brings it. Yeah, you, you really got to like him because – because one, he's he's physical at both ends of the floor. He's a physical defender, which makes it tough, and he just kind of wears on you. And he's a little bit the same offensively, as he he can get his head down and get into the lane, not only to create his own shot, but then he he does a great job of finding open teammates. So it'll be interesting to see how Crawford's able to try to keep him out of the lane, and how to see if he does not wear them down, you know, as the night goes on. Yeah, he's so poised when he has the basketball. You talked about the distribution, four assists per game. That's the top on the team, and also 15.1 points per game. That's a big jump from where he was a season ago as a junior, so he's definitely starting to come into his own. And a coach's kid, man. You know, Charles Toms, the JV coach here for quite a while. It just feels like it's a basketball family. They know what they're doing, these Toms. Yeah, we ran a summer league for, for young kids, like fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth, and those, those two kids were in our league every summer, and, and they've had a basketball in their hands a lot. Um, they understand the game, and as you said, the one thing is neither one of those guys ever panic, and I think sure. that shows a lot because of their growth and development and the success that they've had over the years. So we're just about ready for tip-off here inside of the Cub Cave. Everyone circled around the floor right now. They got the student section lined up in their jammies, so they're keeping it comfortable tonight, but you're expecting them to get very rowdy. But first, let's honor America with the playing of our national anthem. What a matchup we have in store for you folks tonight. Lucas and Colonel Crawford both looking for win number 10 on the season with a victorious effort here tonight. I see the Eagles, they got their 
fan base up in the front. That, yep. How many seasons have these gentlemen been coming out to games? <laughs> it's, it's been a long time. Might be as long as I, I, I've been was coaching. I mean, they're they're kind of. I think they call themselves the front row guys. That's right. Um, and uh, you know, that's that's what's neat about a, a community. Well, really, both communities. Uh, they do a great job of coming out and supporting their teams. All right, let's talk about the keys to victory tonight. First for the visiting Colonel Crawford Eagles. And for me, Coach, I'm going with the baker in the kitchen. You got to get Braxton back to cooking what he does best. Last couple of games haven't really been up to his standards, at least. So start feeling yourself. He's such a versatile threat. He can take it inside. We know he can shoot the three just about as good as anybody in the area. He's got to get back to getting hot. Yeah, and I think, you know, the, the thing with Braxton has been, you know, teams have really started focusing on him uh, because he kind of carried this team really early in the year. Cause, you know, Jacob Maddie, as we mentioned, was in foul trouble a lot. Um, but with Crawford being the team they are, you've seen that as Baker struggled, Maddie stepped up his game now. Um, so the thing that I'm sure that Coach Sheldon's looking at is if he can get two of those two guys going on the same night, they're going to be a tough team to beat. And then keep the Toms in check. You definitely, you got to try to defend those two. So for the Lucas Cubs, obviously the Toms brothers are going to be a factor. You just got to knock down some threes, both Logan and Corbin, and then get after it defensively. Definitely in the interior with these some of these big bodies that the Eagles have. I mean, I think the one thing that Colonel Crawford struggled with when they had lost three out of four, was defensively they had a difficult time of keeping guys out of the lane. So that's going to be a key tonight for Colonel Crawford is their ability to keep both of the Toms out of the lane tonight because um, if they can't do that, um, Lucas is going to have a lot of success. Starting lineups about to be announced here for the Lucas Cubs. Let's take a look at who they're going to be brought to you by First Federal Community Bank. You got the Toms brothers. We talked about them. Aiden Colors, so great to see him back to being healthy and being an impact performer like we know him to be. Zach Dale really has emerged this season as one of the backcourt mates for Corbin Toms. And then Andrew Smolin, big body inside. He shoots it well when he's out on the perimeter. It's a really quality starting five here for Lucas. And I know Coach, Coach Sheldon's not only concerned with the Toms, but he's also concerned with Smolin's ability to step out and shoot the three. Sure. And we did a game earlier here this year um, with um, Lucas versus Gallion, and uh, Aiden Culler was the guy that just did all the little things. Rebounded the ball at the defensive end, was very active at the offensive glass, so the matchup with him inside is going to be a key also for Lucas. And they got the new theme going again tonight, dim in the lights, set in the mood. You know, this is great for high school basketball. I mean, uh, you know, kids kids don't understand that, you know, in this area, the importance that schools place on high school basketball and trying to create an atmosphere that's special. Um, so this is really cool to see here at Lucas tonight. And as you look up into the crowd, I mean, half the town is here, Joe. Yeah. Real talk. I mean, Lucas, <laughs> Lucas has had great success, you know, in basketball the last few years, great success in football. And, uh, you know, the thing that they have is they have people, their community really follows them. So that's great to see. But Crawford's brought a great crowd also. Yeah, jam-packed house here tonight inside of the Cub Cave as we are ready for some high school hoops action. Lucas and Colonel Crawford about to go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, two of the very best small schools that we have in all of North Central Ohio. Tipping it off tonight, we'll have Aiden Culler. Going up against Jacob Maddy, giving up around four inches in height. And Maddy with the tap. Eagles will control here to start things off as they get into the hands of their point guard, Derek Horsley. Having a nice season so far. Working it through the elbow right now with Ethan Holt. Baker off of a screen. Loses Tom's pull-up jumper just inside the free throw line. Good start for him. Yep, good start. They ran a set where they ran Maddie off of a back screen and then down screen for Baker. Brought him all the way to the top, and he makes a nice one dribble move into the lane for a jumper. 
Colonel Crawford, half court, man to man. Cubs working around the outside. I mean, the thing that Lucas does offensively, they show great patience. They are not going to rush anything. They're going to really try to get the shot that they want to get, and they're going to try to spread Crawford out a little bit and see if they can defend him off of the dribble. Off the ball screen, here's Corbin off the switch. Got Maddie on him. Launching, but too firm that time is Smolin. Offensive board secured by Logan. And we're going to get a foul on the floor here, the first against the Eagles. I mean, little things like offensive rebounds become keys in games. So, you know, Crawford does a pretty good job there of contesting the three, but they don't finish the possession by getting the defensive rebound. Here's Logan Toms with Holt on him. Looking over at Coach Iceman for the play. About a full minute has come off the clock here for this possession, to your point, Joe, of just exercising a lot of patience and communication down here at the offensive end. As that one's tipped and put up from the foul line, back iron too strong from color and secured here by the Eagles. Horsley backs it out. Corbin Tom's on him, hits him with the crossover. Now Trevor Vogt turned away, not able to get by Aiden Color. I mean, Lucas doing a tremendous job with pressure on the basketball here. And we're going to get an over and back violation against Colonel Crawford. So that's going to go down yeah. as turnover number one. Yeah. Not sure that ball might have been tipped, but gr great effort by both teams of getting on the floor. I mean, that's, again, you're fighting for possession tonight. So those efforts to the offensive glass, the efforts to get on the floor are going to be key. Tom's picked up by Holt. I mean, Crawford defensively just really trying to protect the paint and keep him out of the paint. Not that time, though. Logan Toms with a pretty jump spot. Yep, spot. and that's where the Toms, both of them, do a great job of getting to the lane and then being able to finish plays. So we're all square two apiece. Minute and a half gone by here. As Baker, strong move, tried to collect his own miss. Maddie's got his back. So you can see the focus that Crawford has right now is they want to try to really get Baker great looks and get Maddie looks also inside. Tremendous effort there by Maddie to get to the offensive glass and finish a play. Toms with a kick out to the corner here, Smolin. Now back out top with Corbin. Great hesitation move. Maddie, though, with the size, ripped it away from him. That's going to be a foul that's going to send Aiden Color to the line for two shots. I mean, you can see the Crawford switching all those dribble exchanges, dribble handoffs. They're also going under all the ball screens because their emphasis is they're trying to keep Lucas out of the lane um, and still having difficulty doing it. And as we mentioned earlier, in an earlier game, Aiden Culler was one of those guys that just made those effort plays. There's another great effort play by him to get to the offensive glass, get to the free throw line. Possessions, again, are key. And the junior switches the second two for two. Here's Maddie from the elbow. Now they free up Horsley. He turns the corner. Mid range J, pure. You know, Horsley stepped into the role to replace one of the best players that Crawford's had. And he's done a tremendous job. He seems just to get better and better each game, not only offensively, but also defensively. He's been able to create a little bit of havoc. He's got Crawford back on top by two as we're halfway through quarter number one. But Lucas taking a lead right back. Color from downtown. You know, and this is about the third time I mentioned this, but 
the color kid I really like. He just does so many things for this team. Traveling violation, giveaway number two by the Eagles. Assessed to Ethan Holt. He didn't really care for the call, Joe. That's a tough yeah. one. Yeah, it's a tough one, but as you said, you, when you're on the road, you're gonna have to. You're gonna have, you're gonna probably have three or four calls go against you, and uh, you just gotta you know fight through it and go to the next play, which Crawford usually does a pretty good job of doing that. That's how coaches truly feel, huh? There's a, yeah. about three, four calls just not gonna go your way yeah. in this type of environment. <laughs> Aiden again, not this time. There's Logan working underneath. He's gonna get fouled. Holtz putting him on the line. Two more shots coming up for the Cubs at the charity stripe. I mean, Coach Sheldon really disappointed there because, again, they force a contested three, but you don't finish the possession by getting the defensive rebound. So this is probably, I think, the second time, second or third time that Lucas has missed a shot, got an offensive rebound, has been able to get to the free throw line. First substitution of the game made by Colonel Crawford. Get our first look at Ryan McMichael. 6'1 junior, replacing Ethan Holt. And kind of a touchy foul right there, Corbin yeah. Toms. I mean, one of the other keys tonight will be how well Horsley can handle this pressure. Because um, he's their main ball handler. Um, and his ability to handle pressure here is going to be key for Crawford to be able to get into their offensive sets in the half court. It's picked up here by Zach Deal as Horsley spins his way across the timeline. So you're going to see a flex cut here. Now you're going to see Baker just, or Maddie just step in. Here's Maddie with a likable size advantage yep. inside. Kick out. Now the skip pass nearly intercepted, but it's going to be tipped off of Baker out of bounds. Turnover number three for the Eagles. I mean, I think the Crawford coaching staff is telling Matty, you got to shoot that shot. The double came late. He had both feet in the lane, and he has a little bit of a height advantage. He just needs to look to score that. Lucas with a three-point cushion, trying to add to it here on this possession. Crawford with the switch. Toms couldn't get by Baker, so he kicks it back up top. Now here's Zach Deal trying to go to work. Quick three, and Corbin Toms bombs away. Timeout taken by Coach Sheldon as his boy's getting doubled up here on the road early. Yeah, you know, it's, as we said, one of the, the things of this game, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's going to decide kind of maybe the tournament seating right now, and it's kind of play, being played like a tournament game. And that possessions are really, really crucial. You know, Coach Sheldon maybe in a different game may not call that timeout, but right now he knows that possessions are key, and you don't want to fall behind more than, you know, six points. You can't let this game get into a double digit. Coach Iceman's got to be extremely happy with how his team's come out. I don't think they've turned the ball over. Um, and they forced, I believe, what, three turnovers uh, with Crawford. Um, so he, he's got to be excited with, one, the patience that they've shown offensively, and two, how they played defensively. Well, if I can correct you, Joe, I don't think Coach Iceman's ever been happy. Not that I've seen. <laughs> he at least won't tell you that he's happy or visibly show it. But you're right. He's got to be pleased with this start. His guys are doing an excellent job taking care of the basketball as they're Ding up well here in the half-court set. Maddie again down on the block, turns inside right into the teeth of the defense, and Lucas thought it was a tie-up. Instead, it's going to go down as a foul, and that'll put Maddie on the line. You know, the interesting thing right now defensively with Lucas is the ball, the last two possessions when the ball is going to Maddie, is that they have not really doubled early. Um, so if, if that's going to be the case, I think Jacob Maddie's really got to look to score. They've kind of seemed to wait until he puts it on the floor, then have, a, have looked to attack him. Maddie knocks down the first. Second on the way, and that's good as well. And that's a big key for a post player. He shoots like 67% from the line, which is, which is good. Um, if, you're, if you're a post player, you're expected to score inside, and then if you're a really good post player, you get to the free throw line, you need to convert. 
So it cuts the deficit back down to four. Here's Toms. Sizing up the defender, he's gonna back it out. Deal from the corner. He spins. I mean, the thing that offensively that Lucas is able to do is they're able to reverse the ball. Um, because Crawford's really concerned about just making sure they're in gaps and trying to take away penetration. But on that play, they were in the gap, but they reached and didn't get there with their feet, so they were able to get by and finish at the rim. Gorgeous play by Aiden Culler, making that whole thing happen as he split the defense. He's the high point man with seven right now. As here's a three on the way for Baker. Nothing but net. Good spot up. Great, great ability to catch it and shoot it quickly. Lucas just a little bit late on their closeout. Nice fine backside short corner. Color short armed it though, and here come the Eagles. Looking to slow it down now. Tom's picking up vote. Maddie looking more aggressive, looking like he's demanding the basketball inside. He needs to go to work right here as they don't double. And just a strong power move over the left shoulder. Jacob Maddie makes it a one point game. And the good thing there for Crawford was he was demanding the ball inside. He wanted the basketball. And now he's understanding that they have not doubled him. So I think he's going to be even a little bit more aggressive. Down to five seconds, three ball on the way. Comes up well short for Corbin Toms. And I think the Colonel Crawford student section yeah. gave him a qu quicker clock than there actually was. Yeah, yeah. but he's a veteran player. Uh, maybe, probably not really the shot that, that Coach Iceman wanted here at the end of the quarter. And that will take us to the end of one. The Lucas Cubs on top, 14-13. Park National Bank treats your dreams like they're our own. It could be buying your first home together or making a lasting impact in your community, starting a new business on your old stomping grounds or reimagining your current one to keep up with the times. No matter your financial goals, at Park National Bank, what means a lot to you means a lot to us. Um, I know that I'm not Park's biggest customer, but I'm treated just like I'm Park's biggest customer. Local celebrities in the house tonight. How about that? A state finalist coach, Scott Spittler, also a great shop teacher out here at Lucas. And our very own producer, Adam Thompson's former shop teacher. So we've got some connections to the success that is Coach Spittler. And a lot of success early for Lucas here in this game. Ethan Sauter also hanging out on the sideline. So plenty of former players here. I I think also it's a Riley Gossam spotting. And I think we, what do we got, our first turnover of the night for Lucas there? Yeah, I think we got a, we got a blocking foul. They were trying to run, uh, I believe, one of the Toms off of a baseline screen on a, on a set coming out of the, the quarter. So, um, yeah, I think first or only first, maybe I think it's the second turnover for Lucas. It is indeed the second giveaway here for the Cubs as we welcome you all. Back inside of the Cub Cave, I'm Brian Skronsky alongside not just the Hall of Famer, but the birthday boy, Joe Baylog in the house, hanging out with us tonight. So make sure that you drop us some comments, wish Joe a happy birthday, and let us know who you're rooting for here tonight, as that's the first two points of the game for Trevor Vogt. Eagles taking their first lead since they led to zip. I mean, you can see that, that Crawford, you know, defending on the ball, they're giving a lot of space 
not pressuring the ball a lot, but just trying to make sure they emphasize to try to keep the ball out of the lane. Another nice move in traffic by Aiden Culler. I mean, great job of one, two dribbles, got to the paint, jump stopped on balance, and just used his strength to get through and finish the play at the rim. Nine points now for Aiden. And that's going to be foul number two, I believe, against Corbin Toms. So with 6.51 to go here in the second quarter, Coach Eisman going to leave him on the floor. Probably got to trust your senior, make some smart defensive moves here. You know, that's, and, and as a coach, you make that decision. A lot of times coaches automatically take somebody out when they get two fouls. But with a veteran player, sometimes you're going to trust them that they're smart enough that they're, they're not going to get that third foul. It's now two fouls in five seconds, the latest going against Zach Deal. And another key to, you know, many times in these games is who can get to the bonus first. So right now, the foul situation is Lucas has five, Crawford has three. You know, Crawford's going to look to see if they can get into that bonus here earlier in the second quarter. Vote lost the handle, but last touch by the Cubs, according to the referee. Vote's coming out being a little bit more aggressive here in the second quarter. Got a basket early. Look there to try to make a spin move in the lane and finish. Here's Maddie from the elbow. Turns and faces up. A couple of strong dribbles. And right at the defender. Missed it. Deal skies for the board. Need physical play on that play, both offensively and defensive. A couple bodies banging pretty hard. Beautiful take that time by Corbin Toms. I mean, Lucas doing what they have to do. They're just attacking the basket. And now they get a great defensive possession that they deny the inbounds pass and create a five-second call. And that was one of the points of emphasis for Coach Taylor Iceman during the break is just talking about their full-court pressure. So the boys clearly listened as they force the turnover, looking to capitalize it into some points here as Hunter Church just checking in for the first time. Gives it off here for Corbin Toms. Everything spread wide open right now for Lucas offensively. And now Logan. Trying to jump stop through traffic and an offensive foul. McMichael is the one who drew it. We'll see if he set his feet here on the first Federal Community Bank replay. Yeah, uh, might might have been moving. The thing and the thing the thing is the two officials kind of looked at each other and the bottom official who was probably closer to the play let the top official make the call. Um, so it would have been interesting to see if it would have been the other way around. Coast to Trevor, coast. Trevor Vogt. I mean, and, and again, little things make a difference. You're not going to get very many transition baskets tonight. So anytime you're able to get a transition basket, that's huge. So Vogt attacking the basket in transition, that's a big basket for Crawford. Pulls him back within one. Baker picking up Toms now, who swings it. Got Smolin trying to work down on the block, but cutting inside, there's Corbin with the catch. Color from three, knocks it down again, his second from downtown. And the difference with that possession, offensive possession compared to the last one, was the last possession, the ball pretty much stayed on the left side of the floor. That possession, Lucas reversed it and got a look. But Jacob Maddy, again, that's kind of a basket in transition. They've broken, broken Lucas's pressure here the last couple times and shot two layups. Puts Maddie at eight points now in the contest. Top man for the Eagles. Foul's going to come on the floor. Be team foul number five against Colonel Crawford. 4.26 to go here in the second quarter. Huge mid-season game. Both teams looking to notch win number 10 on their campaign. Crawford did a good job defending that out-of-bounds play, not giving any good look off the out-of-bounds play. And again, they're switching every exchange here on the perimeter. Church kind of streamlined that one. 
So the Eagles, who have been getting some quick transition buckets lately, wow. trying to get another vote just a bit short with that one, and Church skies for the board. I mean, vote being really aggressive here in the second quarter of looking to take the ball to the basket. Smolin might have got his shot partially blocked that time into the hands of Braxton Baker. Baker's got five points, draws a double team, leaves an open cutter, and now Matty with the putback. The Jacob Matty with a good pass to the cutter, and then the other part of it is the cutter misses the, the Michael misses the layup, but Matty's right there to grab it and finish it. Maddie playing huge tonight for the Eagles. Corbin Toms uncorks one. It's off target and last touched by Lucas. You know, kind of an uncharacteristic Lucas possession there in that that, was, that shot was taken off of about two passes and probably not the best shot that Coach Iceman would want. Nearly a five-second count, so Baker, the veteran, he calls a timeout. Another look there on the replay. Color certainly thought that it was last touched by Crawford. And really, you know, Lucas, is, as you had mentioned, Brian, coming out of the quarter, Coach Iceman talked a little bit about adjustment and their full-court pressure being a little bit more aggressive. And you can see that Lucas is being really aggressive and being very, very physical, you know, and trying to pressure Crawford. So... Not only is it important that Crawford handles the pressure here, but it's going to be interesting to see with Crawford's limited bench to see how much that pressure wears them down as we go on into the game. Been a fun contest so far. Still three minutes, 16 seconds remaining before we reach the halftime break. Packed house here inside of the Cub Cave. And here comes the full court pressure now. Lucas will ease back, pick up half court man to man. McMichael off the square up, looking for some options. I mean, really good job defensively here by Lucas right now. Did a great job defending that set. But Trevor Vogt's been hot, hot, hot here in the second quarter. All seven of his coming in the frame. You know, and in, in, in a game like this, many times it's not the stars that win the game. It's somebody that, that's kind of that role player. And right now, votes that guy that's stepping up and being huge for Crawford tonight. Already at a season average in scoring as Church muscles one up. Lucas being most effective when they've been able to get the ball into the lane. Most effective with that dribble drive. Looked like they definitely want yeah. to get it down on the block to Baker. Little up fake. Yeah. And right over the top of Smolin. I mean, just running that flex action, and they've got Maddie and, and Braxton Baker involved coming off those screens or ducking in after the screen. Color dials one up for his third trifecta. Give him 15 points here in the opening half. So we said about roll guys stepping up. So Vote's been a guy that stepped up for Crawford. All right, Culler's been a guy that stepped up for Lucas. And now Smolin steps in and takes the offensive charge. So it's going to be Lucas basketball. With 96 ticks remaining on the clock. Neither team has reached the bonus just yet. Smolin, quick trigger. Now good, vote. Good job by Baker there of contesting that three after Smolin had just hit one. Now Baker's coming back, looking for one. Missed it, but Jacob Maddy on the back side. Nice ball fake to finish the play. Got two defenders to bite on it. So he pushes the Eagles back out in front. Tom's off the screen, gets Baker to switch out onto him. And a reaching foul is going to go against Horsley on the floor. That'll be the last foul to give for Colonel Crawford. So each squad was six. 
Yeah, Horsley just kind of reached in there a little bit, I think. Coach Sheldon not very happy with it. Um, but, you know, the strength of the Toms is that her ability to get that ball into the lane and showing it right there. Logan, fast crossover, great cut, color rush the shot. And Lucas almost secured an offensive board, but it's out of bounds. And the Eagles now with 43 seconds, he'll have to face the full court pressure. And then perhaps we'll try to hold for the final shot. So, so an adjustment a little bit that Crawford's made against this pressure is they've taken Horsley off of handling the ball against pressure and allowed um, that time Baker to bring it up. And then Trevor Boats also handled the pressure a lot. So right now Crawford's going to look to get this last shot of the second quarter and see if they can go into the half with some momentum. Down to seven ticks as Baker turns the corner to the rack. Can't convert. Jacob Maddie though. Two big points for Maddie. Gives Colonel Crawford their largest lead at the night as we have made it to the halftime break with Colonel Crawford on top. 30 to 26. Make sure that you keep it here. Tons coming up here at the half, including stats analysis, and we'll have an interview with a couple of past former Lucas Cubs. That's all on the way after this short commercial break. National Bank treats your dreams like they're our own. It could be buying your first home together or making a lasting impact in your community, starting a new business on your old stomping grounds or reimagining your current one to keep up with the times. No matter your financial goals, at Park National Bank, what means a lot to you means a lot to us. Um, I know that I'm not Park's biggest customer, but I'm treated just like I'm Park's biggest customer.
All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome back front row here inside of the Cub Cave where I've got some special guests hanging out with me, some former Lucas stars. We'll begin here. Connor Hogger hanging out with me and just being back in this gym. It's packed. It's a Saturday night. Tell me about just the feelings being on this side of the equation. Yeah, it's a little different. I mean, it's like a district uh, district's probably final preview, honestly. I mean, it's, it's a lot of energy. When I pulled in, I mean, I knew it was going to be packed. I had to park all the way at the other end of the school. I was like, yeah, it's going to be rough. Yeah, me too. Long walk to get up here, but it's been worth it so far. Ethan Sauter also hanging out here in the front row. What are your thoughts about the Cubs so far and what you've seen from them in this first half? Uh, everything good, honestly. I mean, I like to look up there. Uh, we got a new scoreboard. Props to that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, but uh, Aiden's playing really well. He's picking it up for us. Uh, I'm pretty excited to see what the second half holds. So. All right, and last but not least, uh, Riley Gossam down here at the end. Seen a couple of your brothers go into work here. Uh, you know, they've been playing good so far. What do they need to do better in the second half? Give some older brotherly advice. Uh, first of all, Corbin needs to uh, stop being a hack-a-shack down there, but uh, they just need to be more aggressive, you know, get everyone involved, you know, do what they do best, which is attack, be aggressive, and uh, read the defense and make the right reads. All right, gentlemen, thank you for the insight. We're going to take one more commercial break. We'll be right back. Second half action on the way from the Cup Cave. Park National Bank treats your dreams like they're our own. It could be buying your first home together or making a lasting impact in your community, starting a new business on your old stomping grounds, or reimagining your current one to keep up with the times. No matter your financial goals, at Park National Bank, what means a lot to you means a lot to us. Um, I know that I'm not Park's biggest customer, but I'm treated just like I'm Park's biggest customer. Welcome back to the first Federal Community Bank halftime show. Brian Skronsky hanging out with the legend Joe Baylog. And I think so far the game's lived up to the billing, Joe. We've got Colonel Crawford. They've made a nice run. They've taken the lead by four. It's been good back and forth stuff. Some of the stars have stepped up. Some of the guys that we were expecting to also try to make some contributions. It's just been a fun overall atmosphere tonight. Yeah, I mean, both teams have, have pretty much played to their strength offensively. Lucas has been able to get the – when Lucas has had success is when they've been able to get the ball into the lane, usually off of the dribble. Crawford's success has been around the rim. Uh, you know, maddie has been huge around the basket. And even, you know, they've really looked where Braxton Baker's had most of his success, except hitting a quick three has been around the basket too. So it's going to be, a, you know, kind of that challenge as to who can stop who. Uh, can Crawford keep them out of the lane? And can Lucas stop the big guys inside? Haven't been able to so far. Jacob Maddie's got 14 to lead the Eagles. 15, though, for Aiden Culler, including a three-pack of trifectas. Let's take a look at the halftime stats brought to you by First Federal Community Bank. And you see the field goals, the Eagles, they got 11 of them. Four threes, though, for the Lucas Cubs. Turnovers pretty similar. Both of these teams, they take care of the basketball so well, Joe. Yes, I mean, and that's that's a sign of a good team in that they do a great job of not not giving away possessions. And when you're in a game like this tonight, every possession becomes crucial. So um, it'll be interesting to see, as we said, one of the things typically with Lucas is that their, their pressure eventually wears you down. Um, we saw that early in the year with Gallion. Gallion was in the game here at the half, 
and then they just took over because they just wore them down. So it's going to be interesting to see if that pressure is going to wear Crawford down at all. Both teams perfect from the charity stripe as well. Six for six on both sides of the equation up to this point. About a minute away from third quarter action and do want to give a quick shout out. We're trying to dial up a photo here, but Shelby Grover at half signed her letter, letter of intent at half court to go to Kent State. I think arguably probably the best girl athlete this school's ever seen. I mean, that's a tremendous honor, especially for a girl coming from a small school uh, like Lucas to be able to sign a letter of intent to run track and field at Kent State University. Yeah. So uh, congratulations to her um, and wishing her the best as she continues to play basketball this season and then gets into her, her main sport, her favorite sport, which is track and field. Grover, also an outstanding basketball player. We'll have more Lucas ladies action coming up sometime this season. As we're about 10 minutes, or I'm sorry, 10 seconds away here from the third quarter. So as we start the second half, the basket at the end of the half was huge for Crawford in that they, they get the score. Now Crawford, Crawford has the ball out of bounds to start. So one of the things as coaches right now, Coach Sheldon saying, hey, let's get a score here, a stop and a score, and you can take this game to an eight-point game. From Lucas's standpoint, they did what exactly what they just had to do. They got a stop and they got a score. And, and so it only now, took them a few seconds. And, 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 so, and so now what Lucas is going to try to do is get another stop and a score and see if they can tie that game up. So Lucas coming out with a big defensive possession to start. And it was all springboarded by Logan Toms, a defensive effort, leaving it off for Color, who has been outstanding so far tonight. And you can just see, feel the energy that Lucas has come out with. And way to way to stop that energy is to go inside to the guy that's been effective, Jacob Maddie. And there he is coming up with the thefts. Maddie pushing the pace. Long two, too strong. Color secures the board. I mean, vote vote takes that three. I don't know if Coach Sheldon real happy with it, but with how he played in the first half, that's a shot he can probably take. But Maddie with two big defensive possessions here. Now it's going to be interesting to see if they go right back inside to him again. And it looks like they're going to they're going to they're going to run a flex cut here, bring Maddie across the top, and they're going to step Braxton Baker in. Nice pass. And two free throws coming up for Ethan Holt. I mean, Ethan Holt makes a really good pass into the post to Baker. They go to double Baker, Baker misses a shot, but Holt does something he needs to do is get to the offensive glass. First one finds its way through for Ethan. Both, both teams shooting well from the free throw line tonight, although they haven't taken a lot, but both teams right now have not missed a free throw. So it extends the Eagles' lead, their largest so far of the contest. Now deal to the corner. Here's Color attacking off the bounce. Stepped his way basically through a triple team. Lost it out of bounds, but last touch by Colonel Crawford. I mean, again, but where Lucas has had success is getting the ball reversed and then attacking that lane. When they've been able to do that, they've had success of getting that ball into the lane. Andrew Smolin back off for Corbin Toms. Left-handed dribble. Draws a crowd, sneaks it inside for Smolin. A think, and he's got the bucket off the square. Great feed by Toms and a great cut by Smolin. Shot fake and went up between Baker and Maddie both to finish that play. Logan hounding Braxton all the way up the floor. Baker came up well short with that one. He forced a shot, David Sheldon, not appreciative of it. And he lets his senior star know. 
I mean, that, you know, he did a good job of shot faking, but Lucas did a good job of continuing to pressure it. And I think Coach Sheldon, much much like Lucas, wants to get that ball moving a little bit um, and, and then look for shots. This time, Culler fouled on his way to the hoop. So Aiden with a chance to add to his game high, 17. I mean, first, first missed shot by Culler. Well, I did hear the Colonel Crawford Eagle section singing happy birthday just now, Joe. I'm not sure if it was intended for you or not. I don't know. As you get to my age, you don't, <laughs> you don't really want to hear birthday calls. <laughs> So it's back down to a three-point game. Crawford, though, with a chance to extend here. Maddie's been so aggressive. Goes up, secures his own miss, and one, showing some emotion. I mean, he's come out the first three minutes and has been a force not only at the offensive end, but at the defensive end. And I think the Colonel Crawford coaching staff's got to be really pleased because early in the game, the first couple possessions, he caught it inside. He didn't look to score. And he's looking to score in every possession now when he catches the ball in the lane. Definitely have identified that as being one of their best mashups on the floor. Here's Logan off the front rim. Zach Dill, offensive board, but swatted out of bounds. Another block for Maddie. But again, Lucas getting to the offensive glass, getting another possession. Um, Could have probably maybe been a foul, but you know, they got a chance here that they can get an extra offensive possession and get a basket. Deal off the hesitation, brings it back out. I mean, Horsley giving Deal a lot of space there, just trying to keep him out of the lane. They're not really concerned with Deal, you know, being a perimeter threat. They just want to keep him out of the lane. Now Tom spins, dishes, color. Quick step into the lane, Matty. Not sure if he's gonna be called for the foul. He will be, it looked like a lot of ball there, Joe. Meek, you know, color being really aggressive. Well, he might've got ball, but usually what happens is if you bring that hand down, the official's gonna make that call. Um, so on that, on that block shot, Matty just gotta go straight up and get it. You know, Culler's struggling just a little bit here in the third quarter from the line. He's one of three right now, but you really got to like his effort, uh, how hard he plays. The last time we were here at the Cub Cave, he had 20 points. That was a career high at the time. Probably going to exceed that tonight. Again, Crawford using vote to to handle the ball against pressure a little bit. Big shot. Knuckleball finds its way through for Horsley. Opening up the largest lead either side's enjoyed so far here this evening. Maddie doing a good job there that he, he felt the double and then Horsley not afraid. I think that was probably Horsley's first shot tonight, but you know, a, a veteran player that came off the bench last year as a junior Senior has stepped into a big role and steps in and makes a big three here. Just past the midway point here of quarter number three. I'm Brian, Joe Baylogs with me here tonight. Big game at Lucas and Smolin. Smolin with, with a great curl cut off of a down screen. Baker got caught a little bit. He curled it um, and was able to catch and finish. Baker fortunate that one came back to him. And he's going to be fouled on his dribble to the basket. It's going to be Colors third. And team foul number three against the Cubs. That, that could be huge right there. Coach Iceman looks like he's going to let him play, which, again, having faith in your, in your start. And in a game like this, we said possessions are key. So, 
you're, you're a little bit more hesitant to make substitutions at times. Oh, great back screen. Easiest bucket of the night for Jacob. I mean, one of the things in winning basketball games are winning baseline out of bounds plays, and Crawford did a great job there of getting a layup off of a baseline out of bounds play. Tough shot inside, but, Logan Toms amongst the trees. Yep, but they, you know, Lucas goes right back to the strength. Now they get a steal on the inbounds. Looking to string together back-to-back -to -back buckets here. Smolin, tough catch. Tom saw about a three a couple times. Now hands off to Culler, who will try one. Clanks it off the square. Culler just got his fourth foul. Yeah, that's a big one right there. He was going in hard for the loose ball. So they're going to check him out. Case and Antrikin's going to check in. Well, actually, no. They're going to sit deal out. But he's got four fouls. They're going to have to get him out. Coach Iceman really wondering how the call was made. But, you know, if you're, if you're Crawford right now, you might look to go and attack him um, on this possession and see if you can get his fifth. That's exactly where they're headed right now. Yeah, they're just going to they, they run a diagonal screen for Maddie here. Um, And Maddie's going to get fouled as he falls down to the floor. I mean, they just ran a diagonal screen, had Baker screen up for Maddie, got him to the block, and then we're bringing, bringing him off of a, a bringing Baker off of a down screen at, at the top. So Church will spell out Aiden Culler, the junior on the bench with 19 points. And David Sheldon, the man of many talents, <laughs> out making sure that floor is good and dry. He knows a thing or two about cleaning up some perspiration, though. Yeah, he's, that, that towel he probably has in his hands probably has a lot of perspiration on it during the game. He's got to go through at least two per contest. <laughs> yeah. There's you know, no question. I mean, but, but you, you know, you, you've got to like the passion that both of these coaches coach with. That's, that's why they're... Their teams are successful because they coach with passion. They demand a lot out of their players um, and do a great job. Jacob Matty on the glass. And Logan Toms thought he had a clean block. Instead, Matty stepping up to the free throw stripe for a couple. And a quick fun story for you, Joe Baylog, from David Sheldon. He told me in his first year of coaching, he really wanted to emulate some of the greats in the area. So, <laughs> a la a Joe Baylog, he showed up in a jacket and a tie for his first couple of games, and he realized there was just way too much sweat for him in that thing, and it just wasn't working out. So he quickly had to find his own unique style, yep. and so the towel was born. It didn't last long in the Joe Baylog suit. Uh, yeah, that's just kind of one of the things that, that I always did. I, I wore a suit. And I had coaches my last 10 years keep telling me, why do you continue to wear that? And probably most of it was superstition of just the success that you have. There's a three on the Big. way. I mean, as we said at the beginning of the game, one of the concerns of Colonel Crawford scouting was Smolin getting open looks, and they don't find him. And now they get a five-second call on the baseline out of bounds, which I think is – is their second, and and also I believe Crawford had to maybe make one or two timeouts to avoid a five-second call earlier. Cubs trying to capitalize, almost a five-second violation on them. They'll bring it up top here with Corbin Toms, checking the clock, going to work. And a lot of contact as he basically went right through the grill that time of vote. I mean, Coach Iceman wanting that call at, at this end of the floor with contact, especially after they thought they had a good block on Maddie at the other end. Here's Logan Tom dribbling it into the half-court set. He's got six points tonight. I mean, I think you're going to just look, both, either of the Toms are going to get aggressive and get into the lane, and here he goes again. So Corbin, the senior... Trying to take matters into his own hands. He'll step up to the free throw line, looking for points number six and seven in the contest. 
I mean, you can see why Corbin Toms is such a good player. He's a veteran. He went to the basket on the, on the previous possession, didn't get the call, and then came right back and did the same thing and basically made that official make that call. like to say what's up to everybody watching on a Saturday night, hopefully from the comfort of your warm home, as that's back iron on the second one. I know about 250 of you watching in Facebook and YouTube lands. And don't forget to leave us a comment out there. That way you can be part of the show. We'll definitely hit you in the fan zone when we get to money time in the fourth quarter. They run that same action. They ran out of a baseline out-of-bounds play where Baker back screened for Maddie. Great give and go. Yeah. Quality basketball right there, Mr. Baylog. I mean, Horsley showing, you know, the veteran leadership. Uh, you know, he's came into the point guard position. But now you, you have uh, Corbin Toms really trying to take over this basketball game. He has been really aggressive of getting the ball to the lane, and they're going to his right, taking contact, and then finishing a play right at the rim. Yeah, his aggressive meter all of a sudden hitting at about 100% yeah. flat right now over these last couple possessions. And the, one of the things we said at the beginning of the game was just his, his ability to be physical, how that wears on you, and he's, he's starting to wear down. You know, Crawford's defenders, trying to give him a break right here before the end of the quarter. I'm sure that Crawford's going to look to get the last shot of the quarter here. They do just get it inbounds. And they'll get it back into the hands of Horsley, who almost lost the handle. Yeah. Horsley trying to be quick to get it across the lane to a line, the half court line so he avoided the 10 second count. But I think right now you're going to see Crawford look to get the last shot of the quarter. But Lucas really coming out and being aggressive on the basketball. Oh, and Zach Dill read it perfectly. But he's going to get called for a reach-in foul. And, and that's huge. That's one and one. Yep, that's huge. That, that, is, that is huge right now. Um, and, uh, you know, Horsley, Horsley going to the line. Um, and he shoots 72%. Whoops, I guess it's not Horsley. I think Michael going to the line. And the first finds its way through. But Michael's a 71% free throw shooter. So in a good position to, to put him at the line. Second one rims out, Smolin with the board. And the Cubs got about 15 seconds to play with. They'll begin with it up top in the hands of their stud junior, Logan Toms. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say Logan Toms is going to get this ball back and look to get in the lane, but they're not going to find him. Uh, Sack, deal, what's the deal? How about two plus one more? You know, as, as we've mentioned, sometimes in big games, you know, you, those role players step up. You know, Zach Deal has has shown his aggressiveness of being able to get to the ball of the lane. And I'm sure that Crawford was anticipating that Tom's is going to be the guy that was going to take the basket. Deal takes it to the basket and gets an end one opportunity and finishes it. One point game. Eagles will get the final shot here. It's going to be Ryan McMichael. Had it on the line, but it won't fall as we're headed to the fourth. Entertaining game. Join us back here inside the Cub Cave for money time. Park National Bank treats your dreams like they're our own. It could be buying your first home together or making a lasting impact in your community, starting a new business on your old stomping grounds, or reimagining your current one to keep up with the times. No matter your financial goals, at Park National Bank, what means a lot to you 
means a lot to us. Um, I know that I'm not Park's biggest customer, but I'm treated just like I'm Park's biggest customer. It's money time here inside of the Lucas Cub Cave, and we've got a good one, folks. Two of the top small school powers in all of North Central Ohio going toe-to-toe -to -toe right now, alive and free. Brian Skronsky alongside Joe Baylog, and it's Lucas with the basketball. They trail by one against Colonel Crawford as we open up fourth quarter play. I think everything we anticipated from this game, we're kind of getting here. That one well off target, though. But during the one minute session there in between quarters, Coach Eisman definitely telling his senior guard, hey, keep being aggressive. We love it, bro. Yeah, I mean, that's big that Crawford was able to get a stop there. Um, and again, trying to go to their trying to go to their strength. Crawford ran a, a little flex action where they ran Baker off of a flex screen by Maddie, and then Maddie stepped in. Uh, Lucas did a good job of pushing him off the block and then showing help and making Maddie try to kick the ball out. Got a deflection ball, side out of bounds. Eagles looking for their fifth straight win. They could cap off a victory here tonight on the road. And this game is really getting physical. Horsley, nice up fake. He spins, never was able to lose Dale. Maddie threw a double team. And out of bounds to Lucas. Half the people in the arena love it. The other half, not so happy. I mean, really good defense and good offense there. Jacob Maddie got right at the rim, just couldn't finish, but... You know, the physic physicality of Lucas defensively really showed on that, po that possession. Maddie's got 23 points on the evening. Had 22 last night, so he's really starting to turn it up as Toms planks that one off the front iron. Three Lucas players all ran into each other, but they're able to recover. Now Baker, end to end, just willing his way coast to coast. I mean, Baker absorbing contact all the way up the floor on that drive and still having the strength to finish that play. Now here's Logan with Maddie on him, a couple of fakes. Jacob wouldn't bite, floater, too strong. Big rebound by the Eagles to hold him the one and done. Now the point guard, Horsley, slowing things down, getting the Eagles back into one of their half-court sets. I mean, again, Lucas, their pressure on the basketball has been outstanding here from the very beginning of the second half. Um, tremendous, tremendous job of putting pressure on the ball. You can't play for Coach Heisman if you're not willing to sit down and play man-to-man -man out on the perimeter like we've seen all night so far from the Cubs. Two heavyweights going back and forth here. Now here's the biggest of them all, Matty, fighting through contact. So they ran a little set there. I think they call it Buckeye, where they ran Baker off of a double screen on the baseline, and then Matty just stepped across the top. Oh, wow. tough break. Great rebound by Smolin, though. Oh, but Maddie was able to go straight up, get a block shot, and now a foul 80-plus feet away from the basket. One and one for Braxton Baker on the way, one of the best foul shooters on the team. Again, as we said, it's gotten very, very physical at both ends of the floor. I mean, somewhat surprised that that block shot wasn't a foul, just again because... Maddie came really hard down with his hand. I mean, got a lot of basketball, but Coach Iceman not very happy with that non-call. And, and now Baker goes the line, outstanding free throw shooter. May be able to take this to a seven point lead. Nothing but net on the first.
There's a look at Taylor patrolling the sideline here. As Braxton, nothing but net on both attempts. Big possession here for Lucas. You know, it's at seven points right now, um, but they've shown that they're able to fight back. Looks here like Crawford's gone 2-3 zone. So trying to change it up a little bit. And they leave Aiden Culler open, who checked back in for the fourth with those four fouls. Now here he is, scoop shot, and he's headed to the line. You know, one of the things that happens when you go zone, you lose the responsibility of boxing out your man. Um, so you got to give Lucas again credit. Where Lucas has gained extra possessions is getting to the glass. So Smolin gets to the offensive glass there. And then Colors has just been really, really good of just being strong in the lane and looking to finish. I think he's 2 of 4 from the free throw line here in the second half, though. So these free throws are big. Because if you make these free throws, the one thing that Lucas can do then is they can get into their press, which has caused problems for Crawford. Twenty points now for Aiden matches his career best. Good stroke there. Short. And now they'll run the offense through Braxton Baker, matched up with Logan Toms, and just trying to bully his way into the lane. Might have forced it. Wow but gets his own rebound, plus the follow. I mean, as we said, the game has gotten really, really physical. Baker absorbing contact on the way up, and then Baker just goes right over the top to rebound the ball. Um, I mean, could have, been a, could have been a foul on his shot, and Baker probably should have been called for a foul on the offensive rebound, but that's two teams fighting. Quick pull up, not their deal. Coming away Man. with the basketball, so a second opportunity for the Cubs. Tremendous effort by Deal to get to the glass. Oh, Tom. left hand for Logan Toms. Monster bucket right there. Keeping the Cubs within striking distance. We, we talked about the roll guy stepping up, but now you're having your stud step up. Beaker at that end, Maddie at that end, and then both the Toms are really stepping up at this end. Uh, this this game's going to go right down to the wire. Logan puts Lucas at 50 points as they're back within five. And this is where they've had a lot of success, as Joe mentioned. Just getting into that full court pressure, forcing the Eagles ball handlers to have to work. They had boat handling, I think, earlier because he wasn't matched up against one of the Toms. Now he's matched up against the Toms and making it difficult. Baker pressing just a little bit on that possession. I mean, a great matchup with uh, Baker and uh, Logan Toms there. I mean, Toms a great defender, Baker a great offensive player. Two great players going at it really, really hard. So Crawford again. Sitting back, 2-3 zone look, yep. forcing Lucas to try to adjust here on the offensive end, burning up a little bit of time. I mean, I think the big emphasis here, they're going to try to keep penetration out of the lane. Great cut there by Toms. They're going to try to force him to shoot a perimeter shot here with some pressure. Logan jump stop, left hand. Got a shot swatted by Holt. I mean, great cut there by Toms, but a great block also defensively. I mean, this, this matchup here is, is, is really, really physical. Horsley, sick crossover. And he tries the mid-range J. Ethan Holt there, loose ball foul. And that's going to send Lucas to the line. I mean, I, I think... Not necessarily a bad shot by Horsley, but I don't think it was the shot that Crawford wanted uh, because it was a shot with pressure, even though it was at eight feet. I think in that situation, Crawford wanted to run some clock and then really try to get an open shot. So 
So Culler at the line with a one and one. And Aiden struggling a little bit here yeah. in the second half. I think he's about 50% here in the second half. He's been there like six times. Toms all over Vote had nowhere to go, picked it up. Logan Toms sneaks in there, and he's going to go in for an easy layup. We're back to a one-score game timeout. Colonel Crawford. It'll be a full timeout. I mean, as we said, one of the things is Lucas's physicality on the ball throughout the game makes a difference, and they have been extremely physical from the very beginning of the second half. Um, you know, Coach Iceman's got to be really, really happy with that. You know, Crawford just got to be stronger with the basketball, and I think what Coach Sheldon's going to talk to him about is moving the ball a little bit more with the pass rather than pounding it on the floor so much. And for the Lucas Cubs in the huddle right in front of us here in the senior veteran point guard, Corbin Toms, just telling his guys, refuse to lose tonight, whatever it takes. That's his message to his guys. Well, and another big thing is both teams have, have eight team fouls, so they're both in the bonus. Um, and, you know, as a, as a coach, some of this is going to come down to how the officials call it. I mean, that, that could be a big, big difference as to who's going to get to the free throw line. And right now, um, they are just letting them play. I mean, uh, very physical, you know, on the basketball, very physical inside. Um, that's going to be a big, big key here as we go down the stretch here in the last 221. And more than 270 of you watching right now live and free for this awesome battle of small school powers. And we're going to get a quick stoppage in play. One of the referees wasn't quite ready yet, still having a conversation over here at this course table. Yeah, you had, you had two officials at the table, and they were going to try to inbound it. And you can't do that. I think there's a question at the scores table as to, you know, something, maybe timeouts or, or whatever. Now, now they're ready to go. According to the scoreboard, Lucas, five timeouts remaining. Crawford's got a couple. And Tom's nearly snuck in there and thefted it away yet again. Boy, has he been fantastic. Sheldon's got to take another T.O. Eagles down to their last. I mean, they, Crawford tried to run a, a, a back screen and looked to throw a long baseball pass for a possible you know, easy basket. Lucas did a great job defending it, and then they, they forced Crawford to catch the ball in the dead corner, which is one of the worst spots to catch the ball against pressure. So Crawford forced to use another timeout, um, which could be crucial as you come down the stretch of the game. Um, so Coach Sheldon trying to draw up something here. Coach Iceman, I'm sure, is telling his guys, let's keep doing the same thing. They're struggling with our pressure. Let's keep after it and see if we can get them to turn it over. What a great chess match that we have going on between both coaches and an excellent crowd on hand here inside of the Cub Cave. Pretty much probably at about max capacity for this gym. Yeah. And this is what high school basketball is about. This is, this is why these players do all their work in the summer to get an opportunity to play in an atmosphere like this. So uh, really excited and, and uh, you know, you got to really thank the fans for coming out to this one. They'll inbound it to uh, Maddie. So they use Maddie as the pressure release guy and now put it in Horsley's hands. Um, and Crawford looks like they may try to spread it out here a little bit. Maddie versus Smolin. Now here's Horsley had it poked away backside. Deal can't uh, collect it and it's Smacked over to Jacob Batty. Crucial play there by the Eagles to maintain possession. Yeah, really crucial. I mean, Horsley didn't stop. Probably may have, may have gotten fouled, but it's playing through it. Um, key thing. And now David Sheldon wants one more timeout. Yep, trying to worry, worry there that the five-second call might happen. But now Crawford's going to be down to one timeout left in the ball game, And Lucas still has four. 
Yeah, interesting. They, I thought that they burned their second to last time out on the previous one, but the scoreboard now showing that they do still have one in their back pocket. Yeah, they have, they have, they have one. So, but again, with I think it's what a little like a minute twenty-one we've got left in the game. Um, you know, sometimes having to use those time timeouts comes back to haunt you a little bit. Um, they just. You know, Crawford's got to get it inbounded and be strong at the basketball. Lucas is going to continue to do what they do is put tremendous pressure on the ball and try to get into a passing lane to get a deflection or a steal. They still can put the Eagles at the line one more time for a one and one. As Colonel Crawford's going to have the ball just inside of midcourt. 96 seconds to go. And they'll have to come inbound to Maddie again. Who made the smart move. It looked like Horsley yeah. was calling for it in the backcourt for a second. Well, that's a, that's a tremendous play by Jacob Maddie. He got trapped in a really tough area and could have, could have made the pass but did not. But again, Tom's coming right back. He has been really special here in the in late in the game. Again, Jacob Maddie in a bad spot. Baker makes a cut. And now Braxton will calm things down a bit. Actually, he's going to shovel it inside. And another bucket. A huge one for Ethan Holt. Back and forth we go down the stretch. Crawford great job right now by, by five. Great job by Baker handling pressure and then a great pass. Tom to the blow by baseline. Maddie with the contest. A lot of contact, no whistle, and a traveling violation. So Lucas gets the ball back. Coach Eisman beside himself. He can't believe it. Coach Sheldon can't either. My goodness. The, the whistle, the, the, I mean, I hate to say this, but the officials are not calling fouls right now. They're, it, it's, it's become a bloodbath. Now Tom! And one opportunity. My God, there's a lot going on here these last few seconds of the game. I mean, Logan Toms has just been outstanding here in, in the fourth quarter. He, is, he has put this team on his back and said, I'm going to carry you. Um, so big, big free throw here to, to cut it to two. I believe this is for his 10th point in the fourth quarter alone as he splashes that home. And trims the margin down to two. What a finish we're in store for here, folks. Baker from the top of the key. We'll see how long Lucas elects to allow them to continue to play defense here before they foul. Baker definitely not the guy you want to. No. And Sheldon's going to call his final timeout for real this time. And Jacob Maddie's done a good job against this pressure of being kind of the pressure release guy because the two the two Toms have done a tremendous job of pressuring the basketball and Crawford's had a lot of difficulty being able to handle their pressure. So Maddie's done a good job of stepping out and releasing that pressure. Um, first thing here Crawford's got to do is they got to get the ball inbounded. Second thing they got to do is they're going to have to really be strong with the basketball. Um, and I think Coach Sheldon right now is telling his guys, we're either going to go to the free throw line or we're going to shoot a wide open layup. Those are the only two things that you're going to do. Um, and if you're, if you're Lucas here, you're doing the same thing you've done here in the second half. Great pressure on the basketball. If they turn their back, you're going to look to trap and try to get into a passing lane. And then depending on how, how late it gets down into the clock, you know, they may have to choose to foul somebody. So a massive inbound play on the way here for Colonel Crawford. And, and the thing is, Lucas has done a tremendous job of, of defending in their inbounds, whether it be full court or side, side out of bounds here. They'll bring Horsley into the backcourt. Tom's all over him. Corbin gambles. Great catch by Horsley. Oh, and Logan Toms thought he picked his pocket and was going to be heading the other way for the tie. And now all of a sudden the referee wants to make a call. Let's check this out on the replay. I mean, I, he, 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 he got hit, I think. Um, but 
But the thing, you know, if we debate here, Brian, <laughs> is you take a look at all the contact prior to that play, that, that's probably one of the least least contact plays that you've had. Oh, man. But I believe Horsley's a 70% free throw shooter, so one and one here. Clutch on the first make. Lucas has plenty of time here. You know, they got four timeouts left, so you know that the basketball is going to go into the hands of one of the two Toms. And with that miss, it's just a one possession game. Mm -hmm. Coach Eisman, of course, going to want to talk things over 14 seconds to go. And with that much time, you don't necessarily have to look for a three, Joe, but no. I imagine they're probably going to try to draw up a play to look for one initially. Well, I don't know. You know, they've had great success of just getting the ball to the basket. So, you know, if you can attack the basket here and, and get a quick score within the first five seconds, um, you're going to take that because he has three timeouts left, so you can sure. call timeout. And the thing that they've done so well is their full court pressure has been, been really tremendous. They've gotten several steals, a couple five-second calls. So I wouldn't be surprised right now that they're going to draw up something that is going to be in one of the two Toms' hands, and more than likely um, I would say it's going to be in Logan Tom's hands because he's he's been outstanding here in the fourth quarter. Got a great crowd on hand on Facebook and YouTube watching it all unfold here. I can't help but kind of lean in and take a look at what's going down on Iceman's whiteboard. So I don't know who's who, but it looks like they're trying to set something up to the top of the key here, Joe. And then from there, we'll find out. Well, if they're probably looking for their best three-point shooter, it's probably Smolin. Um, although Colors, Colors made a couple threes here, too. Um, so it looks like, looks like Crawford's, they're Crawford's man-to-man. Vote is matched up. And they're going to take it into the hands of Smolin at the top. Now they'll gonna, hand it off. They're going to get have to shoot a three now. And they got to shoot a three. For the tie, not close there for Case and Antrikin. Probably not the guy you want taking the final shot. Scoreless on the night, and Colonel Crawford survives. Jacob Matty pumped as he had an outstanding effort. Had a career high in points last night. He exceeds that here. So over the last two nights, 49 points for that kid. Yeah, I mean, and Crawford's got to be really happy with his play this this weekend. I mean, he was outstanding tonight. Um, I mean, a tremendous basketball game. I'm sure that was not the look that Coach Iceman wanted. Um, so you got to give Crawford a lot of credit with how they defended there. Um, but... Both teams can learn. They learn a lot from this game tonight, um, and and I'm sure that Coach Iceman, when he goes in the locker room, he's going to say, you know, fellas, we're going to get another chance at these guys. We just got to continue to get better as a basketball team. Uh, you know, one of the best high school games that we have probably seen this year. No question about it. And we've still got more coverage on the way from inside of the Cub Cave. So stick around. Our post game show is on the way right after a quick word from our commercial sponsors.
National Bank treats your dreams like they're our own. It could be buying your first home together or making a lasting impact in your community, starting a new business on your old stomping grounds or reimagining your current one to keep up with the times. No matter your financial goals, at Park National Bank, what means a lot to you means a lot to us. Um, I know that I'm not Park's biggest customer, but I'm treated just like I'm Park's biggest customer. What a finish tonight inside of the Cub Cave, and you saw it all live and free thanks to these unbelievable sponsors. How about Ohio Valley Manufacturing, heavy gauge stamping and precision blanking services, and they are hiring now. Check out their website for more details. First Federal Community Bank, banking locally just got a little bit easier. Burkhart Farm Center, farmers serving farmers in Frito-Lay. We are driven and inspired by our purpose, food that matters for life's moments. And now welcome into our first Federal Community Bank post-game show. Brian Skronsky along with Joe Baylog. What a finish we had here tonight at the Cub Cave. We anticipated a game of this caliber. Two teams, two heavyweights going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Colonel Crawford just made a few extra plays, I think, in the third quarter that gave him enough cushion to eke one out here inside the Cub Cave. No, the, the one thing we said coming into this game was going to be physical, <laughs> and and it, it really got physical in the second half. I mean, I think we just mentioned before the break that uh, going into the fourth quarter, both teams had 18 fouls, and now as we look at the scoreboard, both teams in with 19 fouls. Um, so there was not a lot called, so... Uh, again, you talk about kind of a tournament atmosphere. That seems to be what happens in the tournament is that it just gets really, really physical. So, um, you know, you, you give Crawford a lot of credit for keeping their composure. Um, you also give Lucas a lot of credit for just how hard they battled tonight. Yeah, no question about it. They made enough plays in the fourth quarter to get themselves back in the game. They were in striking distance, had the ball with an opportunity to score and tie things, force overtime at the end. But... Things didn't crumble their way at the end of the contest as, man, those are two teams that, as you mentioned there, probably going to see each other again in the tournament action with Crawford moving down to Division Four this year. They'll, they'll probably meet again over at Willard. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I mean, I'm not sure, you know, with the, the Martin RPI, I mean, Crawford or Shirley will stay one. I'm not sure how much Lucas will drop, but um, there's a lot of basketball to still to be played, and the tournament draw will be three weeks from tomorrow. Um, so I'm, I'm going to be pretty assured that both of these teams are going to go opposite of each other with the idea that they would meet in that district final game at Norwalk. All right, let's take a look at the final stats of the night brought to you by First Federal Community Bank and Colonel Crawford. 20-15 to 15 edge in terms of the field goals on the night. 
We didn't see very many three-pointers made by the Cubs in the second half. They made four of them in the first, and then the turnovers, both these teams, we knew they were going to take care of the basketball. So, I mean, it was razor thin, Joe, when you look down the line across the board in terms of the numbers. Like, nothing really jumps out at you in terms of what was a big difference in the equation. I mean, it's, it's just kind of what you mentioned earlier, Brian, is Crawford was able to make one more play, um, and they were able to make that big stop. You know, at the end, um, forced a, a contested tough three by a guy that really hadn't shot it. Um, and those, those, those many times are the difference in, in basketball games like this. But, uh, you know, Jacob Maddie's performance was outstanding. Um, I believe I got it right. Logan Toms um, in the second half, and especially down the stretch, was, was outstanding too. Sure. I mean, they, he couldn't, they couldn't stop him in the lane. Um, so, uh, you know, just a tremendous high school basketball game. Well, we're going to step aside. We'll take one more time out. We are going to be back with a man who just collected his 300th career victory, David Sheldon, on the way right after a quick break. Park National Bank treats your dreams like they're our own. It could be buying your first home together or making a lasting impact in your community, starting a new business on your old stomping grounds or reimagining your current one to keep up with the times. No matter your financial goals, at Park National Bank, what means a lot to you means a lot to us. Um, I know that I'm not Park's biggest customer, but I'm treated just like I'm Park's biggest customer. We're back here inside of the Cub Cave with a special guest joining us right now, David Sheldon, the victorious coach tonight. But it didn't come without a little bit of drama at the end of the game. Really fun one, Dave, and always animated on the sideline. Just take us through your eyes there, the final minutes of the game, and how it kind of all unfolded in your guys' favor. You know, I just thought it was a battle all night. It was like a district tournament game. It was a great non-league game. That's why you schedule these. Because after the night, there's no championships won. It's one game, and that's a great program that Taylor Iceman has. And you look, you know, it was back and forth all night. And in the third quarter, they really hurt us just to get into the paint and in once. So we started the fourth in our zone. And our zone was pretty effective, making them shoot outside instead of getting deep. And we extend that lead. Then at the end, you know, we spread the floor. Our philosophy, the last two and a half minutes, we're going to shoot layups. And I wasn't real happy my point guard. He took a jumper in there, and uh, he had to hear from me. But then... We did okay. We had a couple turns. We didn't get it. They're just so physically strong. But, you know, Derek steps up and makes one, and what a great last defensive possession. They got some good action. We switched the handoffs, and we just said, hey, everybody's a shooter in this situation. We'll give up a two because it's going to be under 10, and we got to stop. And, you know, it's good to get out of here with the win. But, like I said, nothing's won tonight. It's just a great basketball game. Well, for you, it is win number 300, so obviously you haven't had a whole lot of time to like really reflect on that, but 
halfway here to Coach Baylog's number. I imagine it feels like you're kind of chasing that ghost here in the area. But for real, though, how cool is it to continue to have the type of success that you've had and keep hitting these milestones? You know, I've been blessed. 17 years ago, they gave me the opportunity. Mr. Ted Bruner was the superintendent. And, you know, you look at this is a program. It's not David Sheldon. I've had unbelievable assistant coaches. I've had fantastic players that have bought into our program. And I've had parents, about 90% of the parents have bought in. And that's a big thing because we have discipline on roles and what. And our kids have come. It's like today at 7.30 a.m. I was in the gym with third, fourth, fifth, and sixth graders for two hours. And that's the most proud. When I mean, you look at 300 wins over 17, it's what the program's done, almost averaging 18 wins a year. The consistency. And that's a credit to my great assistant coaches all the way down to junior high to my awesome players. I've had so many great memories and been very blessed. And uh, it also means I'm getting old like Coach Baylog. <laughs> and, and Joe Baylock's birthday actually today, so, so, so another trip around the sun. And Joe, you, you know something about building a program and to see what David's done. I uh, imagine it's got to be pretty cool to see, you know, averaging 18 wins per season for Colonel Crawford. Well, I, I, the thing I, that most people don't understand is exactly what David said, all the work that comes in it. It's not just what you do on the floor here on a, on a Saturday night. It's, you know, being in the gym with third and fourth graders and then having your players in the gym at that time also so those third fourth fifth sixth graders they're they're wanting to be the next braxton baker they're wanting to be the next mason studer and that's how you build build a program and it just you know it just continues it's, it's a, a lot of hard work and we really want to congratulate david uh you know uh, he he's come has a great pedigree with his dad his dad was tremendous to me taught me a lot about building a program so it's kind of neat to see that legacy continue uh, in this area. And I guess on that note, Brian, I've had so many unbelievable mentors. You know, with my yeah. father, uh, head coach forever at Winford, 451 wins. I grew up in diapers around coaches, hearing the talk, going scouting, uh, getting the guy's daddy pops. You know, I grew up in that. That was my job, and I soaked it all in. And I still call Coach Baylog, Dave Fralick. Paul Wayne, Steve Williman, and the list goes on. Steve Moore, on and on. I've been so blessed to hear different philosophies and create our own program. And still as animated as ever, truly is a pleasure to watch you work in those sidelines. I, I joke about it, but I truly feel like we got to get a Sheldon cam one of these <laughs> days when we're at a Colonel Crawford game. So uh, congratulations on a big win. Continued success, man. I'm sure we're going to see you a lot more down the road here this season. Thanks, Brian. And I ask my guys to play with passion every possession and that's, that's how that i coach and they know that they've seen me and they've grown up jacob may knows he's gonna get ripped every once in a while but i'm also there patting them off by that butt loving these guys behind the scenes when nobody's in the stands that people don't see but thank you and thanks for all the oh report does our pleasure and i'm glad that he brought up jacob maddie because i think it's time now for our player of the game it is indeed the senior center for the Eagles, Jacob Matty. And career night for you last night against Buckeye Central. You top it here tonight. Tell me about just mentally your gameplay right now. Do you feel like you're at a place and a comfortability in your senior season that you just haven't been so far in your career yet? Yeah, start, starting the season, I was not a great back-to-back, back-to-the-basket -back, back player. You know, I kind of was just wasn't used to it. And then I got used to it last night. My confidence grew a lot. And then tonight, I just said I got to do that same thing. And it worked out a little bit better tonight. Yeah, it seemed like at least in the first quarter, you were a little bit hesitant at first. And then coach kind of was like, you've got the mismatch. At one point in the game, did you diagnose and decide, hey, I can kind of take over and get my shot whenever I want? Well, I knew, I knew I could get past my initial defender that doubled me. I passed the Ethan Holt and Trevor Vogt who make big shots, and if they don't double me, I'm finishing it. Five straight wins for you guys after you had the long regular season streak broken. I imagine that's got to feel normal again to be back to the winning ways and gone a few weeks without an L. Yeah, it feels nice. I mean, we never really talked about the streak. Yeah, it'd be nice, you know, it, we're still always oh, just a record, but we didn't really focus on that streak a whole lot. And losing it, yeah, it was a, kind of a big, big deal, but it didn't bother us a whole lot. And then for you as a senior, Braxton Baker, he was the guy at the beginning of the season who was scoring a ton of points. He was kind of carrying you offensively. He hasn't been up to at least his caliber the last few games. What does that mean to you to be able to fill those shoes, step up, and now you're becoming the scoring threat? When our teams realize they either got to guard me or him, and if they guard both of us, we got Ethan Holt who's scoring di double-digit games the last few games. So we're just trying to make it where they can't guard one, one of us. One of us has to score. 
So collectively as a unit, does the Eagles feel like right now that this is kind of the best that you've been this season, that you're progressively taking a few more steps? Best so far, but we can definitely be a lot better. We're not at our full potential right now. Well, congratulations on a huge win here inside of the Cub Cave, and we had a big audience watching tonight. If you want to give a shout-out to anybody out there that maybe helped you with your game or that you just want to say hello to, <laughs> now's your chance. Uh, my teammates, my mom, she pushed me as a kid, and my stepdad, he, was, he helped me a lot. He helped me a lot. All right, Jacob Matty, another double-double. He is our first Federal Community Bank MVP. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back to wrap things up from Lucas. Park National Bank treats your dreams like they're our own. It could be buying your first home together or making a lasting impact in your community, starting a new business on your old stomping grounds or reimagining your current one to keep up with the times. No matter your financial goals, at Park National Bank, what means a lot to you means a lot to us. Um, I know that I'm not Park's biggest customer, but I'm treated just like I'm Park's biggest customer. Final trip inside the Cub Cave tonight where it was a 60-57 victory for Colonel Crawford here on the road, getting win number 10 on the season as they hand Lucas their first loss since the turn of the new year in an exciting game where we saw Aiden Culler match his career high with 20 points. Jacob Maddy sets a new career mark. He had 27, and you just heard from him, a really humble kid that's starting to grow into his own here in his senior season. So... We've done a lot today. My second broadcast after wrestling this morning. I think there's only time for one more thing here to do. If we can just go ahead and turn that camera on to Coach Baylog and let's get a rendition of Happy Birthday. Can we, guys? <laughs> a one, a two, a three. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. One more time now. Happy birthday, Joe Baylor. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Woo! <laughs> That's a good way to close it. <laughs> All right, thanks so much to Joe Baylog for sitting through our awful singing. But, hey, we brought it the best that we could. And a big shout-out to our sponsors one more time. Ohio Valley Manufacturing, First Federal Community Bank, Burkhart Farm Center, and Frito-Lay. For Mason Neese, Adam Thompson, and everybody back at OH Report Studios that help make tonight's broadcast possible, I am Brian Skaronsky saying so long from the Lucas Valley. <laughs>